but I'm also the Director of User Experience for Gravity Free in Sarasota. A um, yeah. couple of announcements. This will most likely be our last meetup here at Dyer Yard. So, you know, it's kind of sad. I think we've been here for about two and a half years, every second Thursday. So we're moving on to other spots. Um, we're, I'm, like, I'm thinking about making, um, thinking about testing some things out. That next month in October, we're going to try to keep it on the same day. I'm going to talk to uh, Andrew, our food sponsor. By the way, thank Andrew for the uh, Chick-fil-A. Hey. 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 Uh, I'm going to talk to Andrew about maybe hosting us next month. Uh, which is right off the 275 on the Tampa side of the bridge. No one's screaming yet. Um, um, and hosting it, uh, hosting it there. Uh, I've been kind of thinking about doing a talk on element queries for a little while. Uh, so we might we might do that. So if you've been playing with media queries and you're like, oh, media queries are fun, but I don't care about the size of the screen. I care about the size of the parent box. That's when you should come to that. Um, and then in October, I've already uh, blocked down the space for Valpac. So within their big community room, lots of parking. Um, there's kind of pros and cons. I'm really excited that they're kind of sponsoring that location. Um, but I will need to kind of give them our RSVP list uh, three days in advance because the people with their badges and their guns won't walk us through the door. Um, so we're going to kind of see. I'm going to test out both locations, see what you guys think. I want to hear your feedback, you know, and uh, more than just based on how many butts are in seats. Like, actually come and like tell me what you think, OK? Um, also, um, and I'll probably have to reference this code, I've been invited to speak at Merge Show in Orlando uh, for their CMS Summit. I'm going to be talking about my hate for WordPress. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking on Craft, on Craft uh, CMS, uh, and my hate for WordPress. Um, tickets right now, I think, are like $700. I have a coupon code um, for $400 tickets, but I'm also going to raffle off two free tickets. I don't have those yet. I don't have that organized yet. But next month, I'm gonna we'll probably do a raffle. So it's at that point, those tickets will probably be $800 each. So I'll give away two tickets. The conference is four days. I think it's October 14th through 18th. And they call it Merge because it's like merging business and tech. All that stuff. So there's like business um, speakers, tech speakers, marketing speakers, and all that, and then me screaming about how WordPress sucks. Um, there's gonna be like confluence and synergy too. Right, right. Too, yeah. What's that? So there's gonna be like some confluence and synergy too. Maybe. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's probably gonna be some synergy, and we're gonna speak about business dynamics, and and I think they're gonna do. Um, Kind of like a, a round table of like all of us CMS supporters and like probably make us fight. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they're gonna take like two bottles and like put them together and see who wins the fight. If you don't get that joke, you're too young. Um, I think that's actually here. Let me see if I can give you that discount code if anybody wants to see it. So the the, the web address is actually mergeshow.com. If you want to get your you know office to pay for it and you. Not Which wanting to actually, wait. Actually, seven hundred dollars for a conference is pretty awesome. It's not so bad. That it's not so bad, especially for four days. Yeah. That's uh, really nice. But if you go to MergeShow.com and you buy tickets and you enter the discount code uh, WCO not zero O dash four hundred, you can get tickets for four hundred dollars. Okay. And then uh, next month we'll do a, a raffle. Of so we try it for dash three hundred. What's that? <laughs> Maybe. You know, if you do Dash 300 and you just get it, you just let, it, let everybody know. I mean, I'm good. I got the stupid speaker thing. They let me do whatever I want. I just kind of show up and give me water. Um, but that's, I think that's it. Uh, and what, really quickly, though, just an idea. So if anybody is wondering, oh, man, I don't want to go to Tampa on Thursday, the third Thursday of next month. Um, there's second actually, Thursday. You're going to Second, some sorry. Second Thursday. There is a hacker space right up the street. And so if you want to just chill out there, avoid the traffic, work there for a couple of hours, and then head on over to K-Force, it's like, what, a couple blocks away from mm -hmm. your place. It's it's really awesome. So think about that um, to avoid the traffic. There you go. Okay, so uh, I want to introduce our speaker, Zach. I got a chance to see, I think it was last year, right? We yeah. did uh, Bootstrap, right? So uh, we were in, uh, is that the 352 office? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. 
that was the first time I got to meet Zach and uh, did an awesome job. And so when this opportunity came up, I was like, holy crap, yes, let's start talking about CSS layout grid because we're not using it right now. You should go to the I can I use and go, oh yeah, I can use it now. It's all green. It's all, it is. That it's all green slimmer. except that stupid IE11. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so all right. with that, Thank you, Zach. Awesome. Come on, that's what we do. We just made it up now. Just high fives, okay? <laughs> Hi, I'm Zach. Hi. 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 I'm Avery Carter. We just started this. So, full disclaimer, I did not know I was going to be recorded tonight, so I wish I practiced a little bit more. Would you like it not recorded? Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, well, I'm going to be talking about CSS grid layout. Some of you might be talking and chiming in and telling me that I'm wrong. I kind of taught myself the grid layout about a month ago, kind of crash course for myself. Uh, show of hands, before we get started here, how many of you have written any CSS grid layout code? Anybody? Handful, small handful, okay. How about Flexbox? Good. Uh, sounds good. Any, no CSS written before? No? No? Okay. Cool. That's all right. All, all y'all fans should have been up for Flexbox then. So, we're going to be learning about uh, CSS grid tonight. So, here's the agenda. I'm going to do a little intro about myself here in a second. We're going to see what, what is CSS grid layouts, the browser support, basics of using it, uh, how do we use it with Flexbox, uh, maybe some, uh, I have lots of examples in here, I also have, have lots of uh, resources and links at the end, and at the end a little bit of uh, Q&A time. So, who am I? I'm Zach, I am Senior Interface Designer at Mercury New Media, and what do I do? Well, this is just some of what I do every day. I do UX, UI, and front-end design and development. Uh, we also do add on Scrum, and I also am a mentor to a few other uh, interface teammates, UI teammates. Uh, so on any given day, I might be doing wireframes, I might be doing some uh, usability testing, user testing, worrying about accessibility, uh, might be working in Photoshop or uh, Adobe XD, uh, I might be doing some front-end development, which we use a whole bunch of uh, tech at Mercury, everything that you see up there. So, uh, beyond, uh, further back than that, um, I have a BFA in graphic design. And I, at one point in time in college, I, learned my, uh, I taught myself uh, CSS and I knew more than my college professors. So I kind of self-taught a lot of uh, web design. But... All right, getting right into it. CSS grid layout, what is it? Um, so I'm going to, in this talk a lot, I'm going to be comparing things to Flexbox. I'm glad that everybody, most everybody here has uh, used uh, CSS uh, Flexbox because they sort of go hand in hand and they overlap a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be comparing to Flexbox quite a bit. CSS grid layout, um, think rows and columns. So think of Excel, think of uh, sort of tables where you've got rows and columns. but more than that, it's like it's coordinates, right? So things are lining up at a specific spot on the canvas in the browser. Um, it can sometimes uh, CSS grid can sometimes be three dimensional. But it does respect the Z index, so things can be layered uh, on top of each other as well, uh, kind of like absolute positioning. Um, but versus Flexbox, Flexbox is very good about uh, rows or columns. So things in a row. So with Flexbox, uh, Flexbox, you can tell things. Well, I want things over to See, that would be your right, or over to the left, or I want things at the top, or I want to stick things at the bottom. It's really good about that with things like margin auto. Um, it doesn't really do the grids and the coordinates as much. Uh, you can sort of force it to do that, but it wasn't really meant to do that. That's what grid layout is for. Um, one thing to note is that grid layout does not replace Flexbox. Uh, Flexbox is sort of, um, it's supposed to be like a uh, float killer, absolute positioning killer. Grid layout doesn't have that kind of connotation to it. It's, it's meant to be its own thing and it's supposed to be a tool that you can use. So you can still use Flexbox, you can still use floating if you want to. Uh, you can still use tables if you really want to, you probably should be. But you could if you want to. Um, so, when we get into grid, uh, CSS grid, 
something we should be thinking about is browser support. Everybody see that okay? Just wondering if the light went off, it might be better. Yeah. There you go. Talk like we've got light controls in here, knowing it's to kill all the lights. So, browser support. Uh, really great came into being, I would say, about March of this year, because all of a sudden Chrome, Firefox started supporting it shortly after then. Uh, the most recent version of Edge starting support, uh, supporting it. Uh, Safari as well, Opera. Uh, mobile browsers uh, uh, have supported it there. So what's missing here is IE 11. Of course, it's Internet Explorer is going to cause us a bad time. Uh, also, older versions of Edge. I think there was an update this year for Windows 10 where you got the newest version of Edge. So um, Edge is still sort of gaining steam, and Windows 10 as well is, is gaining steam uh, as we speak. But even older versions of Edge don't necessarily, uh, they, they support older version of the uh, specification which is sort of outdated at this point, and they don't really go together. Um, and then Opera Mini, uh, in case you need to support that, that also is currently missing. So you should be referencing uh, the site a whole bunch, because I do every day. Uh, CSS, uh, excuse me, Can I Use is a really handy website that tells you uh, what things are supported in browsers. Uh, this is for CSS and for JavaScript. So for Can I Use, um, you got pretty green across the board here. Um, if you need older iOS Fari back to 9, uh, it's not supported. It will start to be supported in 10.3, so like the latest update. Uh, uh, iOS 11 is going to be coming out soon. Um, and then we see here IE has sort of partial support with its own prefix weird thing that it was doing, a little older specification. Um, the good thing about CSS Grid and its support um, is that it's sort of in line with another specification, which is, um, hey, Brian. <laughs> cool. Sorry to interrupt you. Please turn the back. Uh, CSS supports is sort of in line with um, uh, CSS grid. So has anybody, anybody everybody know what uh, uh, CSS supports is? It's sort of a media query where you write at supports, and then you can define uh, does this support CSS Grid? If it does, then you can write some code. It's basically a progressive enhancement in CSS. So there's a nice thing with if, if you're worried about IE, um, you're not going to break IE. You can specifically target browsers that support CSS Grid using CSS supports. There's also a polyfill for CSS Grid if you really need older support. Um, I haven't used it. I, you're, mileage will vary. Um, I've heard good things about it. I've seen a couple sites that use it. Um, but polyfill is in general kind of want to stay away from and kind of go more for an enhancement kind of thing and let IE11 kind of fall back gracefully, as gracefully as you can let it fall back. Um, that's browser support. Any questions there before I move on? Anybody have CSS Grid in production right now? Production site, production app? Yeah. That, that, Nobody. Well, that'd be about right. Um, depends on what you want to support. So I think IE 11, you're, we're about on the edge. We're getting near on the edge of uh, dropping IE 11. I have a handy dandy link here. Uh, this is another site that I reference quite often, uh, Stat Counter. So this is just, it takes global stats for uh, browser support. Uh, globally, right now, I mean, we're not, I'm not toggling any of the options that I can do here. It's giving me just under 4% uh, uh, support for this past month, so to June to July 2017, is, is how many users, 3.373 users uh, are using IE. So this is a great site, you can come in here, you can change some things. So a little bit more respective to us uh, might be uh, trigger this to the United States. Let that load here really quick. And you can see that IE is a little bit over 6. Um, so the place where I work, we are still supporting IE, or I think we're going to for a while. Um, so I don't think uh, I, uh, Windows 8.1 or even Windows 7 is going to go away anytime soon. Um, <coughs> usually once it gets down to about 2%, definitely down to 1%, we kind of drop off those browsers. So you, kind of, you also need to look at your analytics and things like that, and you can kind of decide if CSS grid is, is right for you. The other thing you can do, what we just talked about, is um, you can 
have a more basic layout, or you can write specific code just for browsers that don't support uh, CSS grid. You can fall back to Flexbox or Flows or something like that if you really need it. Um, I'd rather just kind of let things stack and have a more basic layout. Okay, so some basics, and this is going to feel a little bit familiar if you are, uh, most of you are familiar with Flexbox. So uh, we're going to have a parent container. It can be whatever element you want it to be. It can be a div, it can be a section, whatever you technically want it to be, as, at least uh, as long as it's semantic. Uh, and then you're going to have children. So Flexbox is a very similar thing where you have Flex parent and you have Flex children. CSS Grid is very similar where you have a grid container and you have grid item for grid children. Um, so some of the properties here, uh, it's as simple as kind of like Flexbox, you just say display flex and then, then you get Flexbox. You do display grid, and there's a couple different versions of it called inline grid and subgrid. We we're not going to go into that in this talk. But you do display grid and then you start getting the benefits of display grid. It's as simple as that on the parent. You've got some other things like templates. This controls your columns, your rows, and even going beyond that, it's a bit of your matrix and your coordinates, that's the areas. You've got the concept of a grid gap, which if you're a designer, think of print, it's your gutter, it's your, your columns, your column gutter. Uh, there's a new unit with that uh, grid brings along with it, which is FR. This is a fraction of free space. And it's declared like it is up there, one FR. Basically, it's, it's one part of the available space. It's sort of like a proportional thing. So if uh, you say one FR and a two FR, two FR will be twice as large as one FR. It's a proportional type of thing. Um, there's some familiar properties. If uh, With Flexbox, you've got justify items and your alignment. Uh, the children, you have. You also have area, column, and row. We'll get, we'll get into that here in a little bit. And then there's some other uh, children properties uh, like order and justify self and align self, which is pretty familiar to uh, uh, Flexbox. So I'm going to get right into some examples. I have a bunch of code pens. Um, should have mentioned this in the beginning. This, the uh, slides are up on the, uh, I believe put it up on the uh, front end uh, meetup. There's a link up there. There's a link to the PDF so you guys can follow along if you want here on your laptop. Uh, the links are all up in that PDF, obviously, as well. So, get right into <coughs> some of the examples here. Let me open up the important part, which is the CSS here. This is the code pen. This is a very basic example. Right now, we're just going to uh, concentrate on the parent, which is we're, we're de declaring display grid right up here. Um, and then we're going to get into some columns again. So, this is going to look a little familiar to Flexbox, and I did that kind of intentionally here. So just as a quick example here, you can add more items. You can see as they kind of keep adding and appending over there. But this is using uh, display grid. So this is this is grid and, and action right here. But it's pretty basic. You could do this a number of different ways. You could do this with floats. You could do this with flexbox. We're doing it with display grid. The nice thing about this is that it's not a lot of code. I have some commented out code here. But basically, we've got five lines of code on the parent here. One, two, three, four, five. One's the purple over there. And then we can make this happen. With things like floats, you'd be writing more than five lines of code. Because you have to do like last trial and things like this. And, and uh, clear fixes and, and other weird things as floats. Uh, but this is, this is very clean. So what, what's going on here? So we, we said display grid. Is that made? CSS grid kick in. We have the concept of columns. So we obviously have three columns here, and you can see over here, we've declared uh, three different uh, declarations here corresponding to the three columns. Um, so we can change this. Let me show you what happens. So we can hit five. You can see the first column here, and only the first column has now shrunk down to five rows. Uh, you can see that this is controlling each column here, they're, they're independent of each other. Uh, at least in this particular uh, format that I have going on here. Um, if we, uh, uh, yeah. So then for rows, we have uh, template rows, auto. That's just saying the height can be whatever it wants to be. Just, just let the content kind of dictate the height. But we could also declare 
a specific unit. You can see that doing that, it's made them uh, get larger, kind of declare the height of the road. 